But where are those who share the memory? We've been waiting quite a while, but the Shrine Maiden still hasn't shown up. Hmm. It looks like we'll just have to start the third round without her. Traveler, Paimon. Please let me be your partner for the final round of the Test of Courage. I'd like your assistance with this investigation, since you two are the only ones who have seen the alleged ghost. That's fine with Paimon. What do you think, Traveler? I have a few theories, but we don't have enough leads yet. There are some places I'd like to investigate first, so you two can accompany me. Sure. Where would you like to start? I want to go back to where we first met up. According to your accounts, you encountered the ghost there and passed out. I believe there may still be some clues there. Uh, do we really have to go there? What if we're walking into a trap? Are you worried that she'll be waiting for us? If anything, that would make things easier. My worry is that we won't be able to find her. Honestly, it'd save me a lot of trouble if she were to show up on her own. You're fearless. The more cases you see, the less afraid you become. This should be approximately where you first encountered the ghost. Of course, we cannot conclude whether the woman is actually a ghost or not at this point, but I'd like to go over everything that happened again. Do you recall anything she said at the time? Hmm, let Paimon think. She warned us not to go near her, and she said if we didn't leave, our souls would become trapped here. Paimon doesn't want to remember that moment. Paimon's shivering just thinking about it. And then what happened? Then, everything seemed to get darker, and Paimon started to feel dizzy. There were ghostly flames flickering all around, and... Paimon saw some sort of black mist surrounding the ghost, and then... Paimon passed out. Hmm. Based on your account, it does really seem like you've seen a ghost. Exactly! So are you convinced it was a ghost now? It's possible, but I'm more interested in what she's actually trying to achieve than what she is. Even if she is a ghost, as long as she possesses some sense of reason, then there must be some purpose behind her actions. Wasn't she after our souls? She said that herself. I think she was just trying to scare you. Oh, you think so? Think about it. If I had the ability to take your souls, then why go to the trouble of warning you over and over again? Besides, a ghost wouldn't have allowed you to walk away knowing about the secret of its powers. Hmm, that does make sense. Huh, why didn't Paimon think of that? I believe there are only two possibilities. The first is that she wanted to reap your souls, but there was some condition that had to be met. You know, like what we usually call a curse. But if you had really been cursed, then you would probably have noticed it by now. So, this is the less likely scenario. I believe she was just trying to scare you away. But why would she want to scare us away? Hmm. Oh, Paimon knows! Maybe she was trying to get us to quit so she could claim the Test of Courage prizes! Oh, 
Oh. Hmm. Probably not. So why does she want to scare us? Do you have any ideas, Hazel? Based solely on your account, I don't believe she actually meant any harm. She just didn't want you to stay here. But this evidence alone is insufficient to make any valid assumptions. She could very well be guarding some treasure or covering up a crime. Though, my intuition is telling me that neither of these hypotheses are correct. Let's continue investigating the surrounding area. found any leads yet? Yeah, some tree branches seem like they were bent by something, but that's about it. I see. After you left, I took a good look around the area. Aside from the bent branches, there are burn marks in some places, but that doesn't really tell us much. If only there was some more conclusive evidence. Excuse me. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Oh, it's you guys! What are you all doing here? We heard you were out searching for clues, and we wanted to help. Oh, that's really brave of you. Uh, actually, we're also really unsure about what's happening here. We just asked the members of Mr. Ito's gang about what happened to them, and it sounded really scary. That lady is either a nasty evil spirit or a formidable yokai. Either way, it's not good. B but we still want to hold the Mikawa Flower Festival. Uh-huh. We long admired the friendship between Lord Kamai and the Samurai, which is why we want to hold the Mikawa Flower Festival, to return the favor we once received from the humans. Even though our powers are limited, we don't want this bond of friendship to vanish. The Mikawa Flower Festival is meant to be enjoyable for everyone. The Chinju Forest covers a large area, so it'd be great to have more help in the investigation. Welcome to the team. Let's all do our best to figure out what's going on. Don't worry, we're very familiar with the area. We won't miss any clues. This is a piece of shade cloth. Shade cloth? Yeah. It can effectively block out light and is used in a variety of settings, including stage performances. There's a rough tear in the cloth, probably caused by a sharp stone, or maybe some branches. Branches? Suppose that a large shade cloth was originally hung from a tree, bending the branches. When the shade cloth was removed from the tree, perhaps one of the corners caught and the branches ripped it, causing a small piece of black cloth to fall into the river. Either she didn't care, or she was in too great a hurry. Perhaps... But why would she hang shade cloth in the trees? I'm only speculating, but... Maybe she used it to create the atmosphere you experienced. Let's not worry about that for now. There are still many variables I haven't deduced yet. Next... I'd like to investigate the place where the Arataki gang encountered her. Do you know how to get there? Oh, I know the way. I asked the gang members where their encounter with the ghost happened when we were chatting earlier. I'll take you there. Good. Please lead the way. Let's go find out what's going on. This is the place. 
they claimed that as they passed through here, the area suddenly grew dark, and some ghostly flames appeared out of nowhere. Huh. What a coincidence. We saw the very same thing. Let's start by taking a look around the area, just as we did before. There's some strange powder in the cracks of these stones. I picked some up and sniffed it to see what it is, and it made me really dizzy. Ugh. I'm so tired now. I found some sort of smashed ball under the tree. The inside of it looks like it was blackened by smoke, and it smells like fireworks. Touching from the burn marks left on the scene, the ghostly flames you saw were not created by yokai power. Rather, they appear to have been caused by something flammable. I'm not sure what, though. Similar scare tactics. And she didn't have the time to completely hide the traces. I believe we're closing in on the truth now. I'm almost certain that the woman you encountered was not a ghost. She possesses no extraordinary powers. She was merely scaring people with some small props she had set up ahead of time. Some small props? But can you really do all that with just some props? What we saw was absolutely terrifying. First and foremost, the test of courage contributed to the unsettling atmosphere here. You were initially frightened by your first encounter with these three yokai, and then shortly after, you ran into the mysterious woman. It was natural for you to be on edge. Because you were already tensed up, you were breathing more rapidly and inhaled a lot of sleeping powder that she had sprinkled around the area. That is what caused you to feel dizzy. That's when she pulled down the shade cloth and lit those so-called ghostly flames, creating a terrifying scene. Hmm, that's the most likely explanation anyway. So, it was all just a show? Uh, she tricked us! There is, however, still one loose end. The person who commissioned my investigation did become stranded on the beach as a result of some unusual power. That couldn't have been accomplished by just a few small props. But if she possesses such powers, why bother with the theatrics? Oh, Paimon can't wrap her head around all this. Hmm. She can only use props to scare people in the forest, but she can use strange powers on the beach. Huh, I see. I think I've figured it out. Whoa, that was fast. If we rule out the potential of organized crime, then only one possibility remains. I know who the woman is. Let's go to the beach. We'll come along too. No, you should go back and tell the others not to be afraid and not waste their time searching the forest. The truth has surfaced. It's time to put an end to all the unnecessary panic and await the outcome of the test of courage. Okay, but please be careful. If you run into any danger, simply call out our names. We'll be able to hear you. There shouldn't be any danger now, but thank you anyway. Let's search along the cliffs, huh? If I'm not mistaken, there should be a chunk of earth that's unlike the others. Come find me here. There she is. Paimon thought 
you were a yokai like the others, but they said they never seen you before. So, who are you? And why did you try to scare us? <sighs> I have already warned you never to speak to me. If you don't leave now, then... Don't move. Just trust me. Your yokai power won't scare us. It'll only hasten your demise. Yokai power? Huh? How did you know? Your yokai that emerged from an object and assumed a human form outside of your own body. When this type of yokai is close to its own body, it can use some yokai power, but that ability weakens as it moves further away. And if the original body is destroyed, then the yokai that originated from it will likewise perish. Should I refer to you as a Hogoita spirit or Tsukumogami? Don't bother. You may call me Hanyuda Chizuru. That is the name I go by now. Chizuru? Why do you want us to leave? If you're a yokai, you should understand why the other yokai want to interact with humans. Besides, we had a great time playing Akitsu Yugen together, didn't we? Just like the story of Kamai and the Samurai. Yes. That's why. That's why I don't want you to be sad, too. Sad? I'm sure the yokai have already told you of the story about Kamai befriending the Samurai. But they don't actually know the entire story. The samurai was about 25 years old when they met at the festival. They met again 10 years later and remained friends. They spent time together drinking, traveling, and sparring. When they had first met, they merely respected each other, but 10 years later, they became best friends. After another decade, the samurai had reached the pinnacle of his swordsmanship and won their duel by a narrow margin. Kamai was so astonished by his defeat, he gave up drinking and began training to become stronger for their next duel. However, another ten years later, Kamai did not meet the samurai. As it turned out, war had broken out in the south, and the samurai had gone to defend the border. Kamai was unconcerned, because ten years was nothing in a yokai's lifetime. But when they met once again, Kamai discovered that the samurai was already 65 years old. He couldn't believe his eyes when he saw the samurai's gray hair and scars covering his body. Hey, old friend. Can you still wield the sword? <sighs> I'm getting too old to fight. <sighs> this time, I've come to say goodbye. I see. Then, how about one last game of Akitsu Hazara? <sighs> All right. The samurai gave his best effort during the game, but had to quit halfway through because he was too weak. After putting down his agoita, Kamai remained silent for a long time before letting out a long sigh. <sighs> what a shame. Their friendship started as something they looked forward to, and in just a few decades it turned into regret. Lord Kamai's appearance hadn't changed, but his dear friend in front of him had grown old. The joys of friendship gradually gave way to the pain of regret. People often say that those outside the situation can see things more clearly. And I learned a harsh truth after witnessing all of it. Everything that people come to regret is inevitably set in motion from the beginning. We yokai are different from humans. We have longer lifespans and different natures, but we share the same world. We interact with one another. We are drawn to one another and will eventually part ways. When the dream ends, 
all that is left are sorrowful memories and lingering pain. Even a wise and seasoned yokai like Kamai felt sadness when it was time to say goodbye. Imagine what a pure and kind little yokai would feel. Oh. So, you mean... I was hiding on this beach, waiting for the last of my days. But those three yokai came and set up the Akitsu Yugen here, which woke me from my slumber. I didn't want them to approach humans with unbridled optimism and enthusiasm just because they'd heard the legend of Kamai and the Samurai. That would simply be repeating the same mistake. Is that why you pretended to be a ghost? To scare all the people away from here? Oh, so you must be the one who trapped that guy on the beach. That was a little bit harsh, don't you think? My power has become pretty weak now, and most of the time I just use some props I've collected to scare people. I can't show myself when there are a lot of people around. But that jerk was greedy. He wanted to steal the decorations from Akitsu Yugen and sell them for a profit. That's why I used my yokai power. To teach him a lesson. Ah, so that's what happened. You have a strong sense of justice. By the way, how did you know the rest of the story about Kamai and the Samurai? <sighs> it's okay if you don't want to tell us. I've already figured it out. Your true form is this pair of Hagoita, isn't it? Hagoita? The pair of Hagoita used by Kamai and the human samurai to play a Kitsu Hazura hundreds of years ago. You gradually developed sentience after being influenced by great yokai power. You were the closest to witness their story. Even with the yokai power's blessing, the Hagoita have started to rot away after hundreds of years. You can't sustain yourself, so you were forced to rely on props to scare people. And if my theory is correct, this pair of Hagoita is also the item we need to find for the third round of the Test of Courage. Excellent work! You figured it all out. Congratulations, little ones. You've passed the third round of the Test of Courage. Miko! And the Shrine Maiden? Paimon thought you went missing! I apologize for causing you concern. It was actually Lady Yai's idea. <laughs> well, what did you think? Were you scared? Because fear is induced by uncertainty, the more chaotic the situation, the better. Having the event staff also mysteriously vanish only added to the uncertainty. I must say, I think this test of courage truly lived up to its name. So you're the one responsible for all the scary stuff! Hitomi, go tell the others that the test of courage has ended and that we have a winner. Now that I've solved the mystery, I'm going back to meet with my client. The intent to steal is not exactly a serious crime, but it can't go unpunished. I'll see you two later. Miko, did you choose the Hagoita for the third round of the Test of Courage because you already knew about Chizuru? Miko, Lady Yai, you're... I followed Kitsune Saigu around the Mikawa Flower Festival one year and saw her play Akitsu Hazura. That was when I saw you. You didn't have a human form at the time, and possessed only the earliest traces of sentience. I remember now. You were on Kitsune Saigu's shoulder. I went for a stroll on the beach some time ago and sensed a familiar yokai power. Though your power was weak, I was still able to find you. You were sitting in a tree, gazing at the tourists below. I overheard you telling yourself that you must be patient and avoid contact with humans. Huh? When was that? I didn't notice you at all. With your powers being so diminished, it was only natural that you didn't notice me. You must have been blaming yourself all this time. You knew Kamai and the samurai became friends as a result of Akitsu Hazura, a game connected to your existence. At the time, I couldn't take on a human form like this. I had only a hazy sense of the outer world. After they first met at the Mikawa Flower Festival, 
I felt proud to know that I had left a mark on their story. But after they said their final goodbyes, I could often hear Kamai sighing to himself. I couldn't help but hide, because I blamed myself. When I woke up again, the world had changed. Lady Yae, you are a well-known yokai. You must know many more things than I do. So I have a question for you. People meet, become friends, and then go their separate ways. After such a short time, they leave only regret and sadness in their wake. Is it really worthwhile for us yokai to interact with humans? Why not? Tell me, how did you feel when you played Akitsu Yugen with the Traveler? I... felt happy, but... Hmm, but your rationality told you that it was wrong, didn't it? It turns out that there is still another piece to the story of Kamai and the Samurai that you are missing. What do you mean? The Samurai and Kamai never met again. True, but the story doesn't end there. That Samurai's name was Yanagibashi Takuto, who also happens to be the founder of the Soran Ishin art. It is believed that Takuto developed this style of swordsmanship while dueling with Kamai, who had also befriended the third-generation heir of the Soran Ishin art, Tominaga Masanari. Five hundred years ago, Kamai and Tominaga fought side by side until their final moments, and the sword Tominaga wielded was passed down from Yanagibashi. The regret Kamai once felt had finally been resolved. Oh. We yokai are not like humans. Humans have too short a lifespan, and the day will inevitably come when we must say goodbye. However, the bond formed by friendship will not be broken, but rather carried on in a new form. There's no reason to be upset by this. Time flies by in an instant, and life passes by like a dream. So, you must be happy in the present. You should understand what I mean now. Hey, compadres! Ito, what are you doing here? <laughs> he told me, told me everything. And I also heard that you won the last round. I even know who the ghost lady is now. Anyway, I had a little discussion with the others, and... Hey, you're that fox lady. Why are you here? <laughs> Please just disregard my presence. Now, tell us what you discussed. Ah, right. <clears throat> Alright, listen up. To celebrate the end of the Test of Courage event, we will be holding the Mikawa Flower Festival! I gave it some real thought and realized that it might be kind of difficult for those little yokai to hold the festival on their own. But with my help, it won't be a problem. That's right. Arataki, the one and only Ito, will be in charge of organizing the best Mikawa Flower Festival anyone's ever seen! Hooray for Ito! Oh. Uh, can we really trust this guy with the festival? Hey, what you trying to say? Besides, it won't just be me. Other people will help too. Even my bro Ayato is gonna be there. Everyone's busy getting ready and the festival will be up and running in no time. It won't be long until you can all join the fun. <laughs> You're the best, Ito! And what would a festival be without me? I'll be sure to go have a look, too. Ah, it has been some time since I've attended a festival. Fortunately, I brought sake with me. Paimon's gotta admit, Ito does have his moments. A festival, delicious food, count Paimon in! Uh, alright, I'll join. If you don't mind, that is. Looks like the festival is started! Let's go check it out! Ito! And Goro! What are you two talking about? 
Oh, I was just saying that if I had more time, I'd have built a massive fishing pond here. Fishing? You know, when I lived on Watatsumi Island, I used to just dive into the sea and catch fish with my bare hands. <laughs> Take it from an expert, using your hands to catch fish is nowhere near as fun as using a fishing rod. Just the other day, I caught a fish so big that I didn't even know how to handle it. I even wrote a letter to Yai Publishing House about it. That's an unusual problem to have. Huh? A big fish? How come you didn't tell us? Paimon could have helped you eat it! Huh? You wrote a letter to Yai Publishing House? Oh, you bet I did. I wrote to the That's Life column and asked Miss Hina for advice. Ah, she's so amazing. She got back to me really quickly, too. Huh, what a coincidence. I do some part-time work there, and I recently received a similar letter. You mean the letter was about dealing with a giant fish they caught? No, could it be? Could it be? That there's someone as good at fishing as I am? Oh, not on my watch. Hey, you all go enjoy the festival. I'm gonna get out there and catch an even bigger fish. Just you wait. I'll be inviting you all to my fish feast. <laughs> Aw, the string snapped. I was so close. Yoimiya, this is more difficult than it looks. Can you really fish out these water balloons with a string? Don't worry. Let me show you a little trick. Just remember that your hand has to be quick. Yo, yo, Tsuri! I haven't seen this game in some light novels before. Do you want to give a shot? Close one eye, aim carefully, and fish it out quickly. Oh, it looks kind of tricky. Paimon will let the Traveler try. You have to catch at least three water balloons since there's three of us. Uh, but Yoimiya, if I close one eye, I won't be able to see anything. Mmm, this ramen is so good. <sighs> yes. It feels like it's been ages since the last time I had some. Hmm? You mean you don't get to eat ramen very often, Ayaka? But it's so delicious! Oh, it's you. We'll need two more bowls of ramen, please. Food like ramen and hot pot tend to have a lot of oil and salt, so I don't get to eat them very often. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Now Paimon totally gets why Ayaka would put cake in the hot pot. Huh? Oh, uh, please. No need to bring that up again. Phew, I'm stuffed. And feeling a little sleepy. <sighs> I'm just gonna take a nap. By the way, were there any special stalls at yokai festivals in the past? Yes, but... Well, it's a long story. I can't believe you couldn't get a single water balloon. You've gotten rusty. Chizuru managed to finally get one and gave it to Hitotsume Kozo. He looked like he really wanted it. But Paimon wanted one, too. All right, then I'll catch one for you next time. Yay! Come on now, this is way more expensive than usual. Even if it is a festival, you shouldn't hike up the prices this much. Hey now, it costs money to run a stall. I need to raise my prices to help cover the expenses, you know? Uh, fair enough. How about five masks for 30% off? Final lock. All right, all right. Uh, it's so hot. Feels like I'm being roasted here. Don't get too close. It's better to keep a few steps back. I know. It's just so rare to see such a nice bonfire. I want to get as close as I can to enjoy it. There are many beautiful things in the world. There's no need to be anxious. The festival has only just begun. I was surprised that you didn't even tell your sister. It seems she was quite frightened, too. It would have been uninteresting had I told her what was going to happen ahead of time. Besides, 
With her friends by her side, she wouldn't ever be too scared. Having a little fright is good to release any tension she might have accumulated lately. <laughs> Everything went according to plan. People started to panic as soon as they sensed that they had no idea what was happening. Oh, how amusing. <laughs> yes, well done. Hey, you two, stop laughing! It was scary! Hmm? Have you finished exploring the festival? Well then, are you having a good time? Yeah, it's great! The original Mikawa Flower Festival was much more lively, but even if you could attend the original, you probably wouldn't be as happy as you are now, because it's always more fun to enjoy a festival with friends, isn't it? Yes. Thank you. Well then, I'm guessing you have something you want to say to her alone. We'll leave you in peace. Hmm? What did you want to say to us? Ah, you saw through me again. I can't help but feel you somehow know everything. It's not that I know everything. It's just that I've been in your position before. <sighs> Traveler, do you have a moment? I'd like to talk to you. Alone on the beach. All right, here will do. Thank you for agreeing to come with me. Actually, I was delighted when I first discovered that I could take on a human form. I was a yokai derived from a pair of Hagoita who came into being in the middle of a festival. So naturally, I enjoyed the lively festival atmosphere. I wanted to go to more festivals, become friends with humans, and play Akitsu Yugen with them. But every evening, as night began to set in, I'd recall the bitter smile of the old samurai as he set down the Hagoita, and the lonely Kamai sighing as he drank his sake. Then I would wonder, if I became friends with a human, would that person experience the same melancholy in the future? As a result, I was convinced that I couldn't do it. I told myself I would not repeat that same mistake. I'm sorry that I spoke so strangely when we first met. I'm sure it must have scared you. I expected you to flee in terror. But when we met again, you acted like you had no trouble being around me. I knew you mistook me as one of the yokai. But instead of telling you the truth, I went and played Akitsu Yugen with you. Hmm... I'm not completely sure myself. Perhaps it's because I've always wanted to be like Kamai and play a Kitsu Yugen with humans. Or perhaps it was because I knew I didn't have much time left, and I didn't want to be alone. Anyway, thank you for taking the time to play with me. When we played Akitsu Yugen, Paimon said the loser would have to grant the winner a wish. At the time, I wished for us to never cross paths again. However, you still came and found me. Meaning, you never granted my wish. So, can I make another wish? Let me think. I wish for you to remember me. Uh, no, I only have one wish. Okay, listen carefully. My wish is... I wish that every day of your journey ahead will be filled with joy like a festival. 